The three plumes of smoke have lifted from the tower of the WVU Coliseum. The vote is in. The decision has been made. And Darren DeVries is the 23rd head basketball coach of the West Virginia University men's team. And this is three guys before the game. Thanks for being with us. Such a big show. All three of us are in. Wouldn't miss it for the world. El Senator, El Hopster, and away we go. Three guys brought to us by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. By GoMart. Go for good times. Go for GoMart. They are all over the state, more than 100 locations. Get the rewards card from GoMart and immediately begin to rack up points to save on fuel and food. Three guys brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They sell family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. Premier pontoon boat dealer in the state of West Virginia. I think I, I have to check this, Brad. I'm not sure on this. I think they're the only, the only business that sells pontoons in the state. Uh, that's unconfirmed. We'll work on that. We'll look into that one. Three guys also brought to us by Conley CPA Group, providing value beyond the numbers. Brad is going to have a series of numbers to share with you on not only the hiring of Darren DeVries, but also on the basketball contest as we record, which will take place this evening in Iowa City. Everything in basketball seems to be happening in Iowa. Iowa, the center of the basketball universe right oh. now. That's And we'll get into a massive game. That, and that's not just a, a big game in round two of the NCAA tournament. The eyes of college basketball upon Iowa City and West Virginia tonight. Yeah. Think about it. West Virginia's women's program has been celebrating its 50th anniversary of basketball throughout this season. And tonight, they will play in what could be the most memorable game in school history, regardless, right? Win or lose, you're playing against the all-time greatest women's basketball scorer in history who's a one seed on their home floor, and the upstart Mountaineers under first-year head coach Mark Kellogg have exceeded expectations all season long. You win this game, and you have the greatest win in school history, and it's not even close. You lose this game, and it's an absolute shoulder shrug. You just lost on the home floor to the one seed against the greatest scorer of all time. In her final home game. In her final home game. And so it, you talk about you're playing with house money. Like all the armored trucks are lined up. You got all the money. You, you, you got all the money. You have nothing to lose tonight. You go up there and you take your shot. And we'll see how it unfolds. We'll break down. You, you have so much money, you're actually driving that Brinks truck, and you just leave the back open. I mean, if something flies out the back, Hoppy, and you don't lose care. a little bit of it, so don't, what? Don't care. So what? Happy, have enjoy. People will be yelling at you, hey, your back of your truck's up, and you go yeah. like, hey, we got it. Don't matter. Playing We're with good. house money. Not our money. We're good. We're good to go. <laughs> so we'll get into that. Okay. So 11 days after formally announcing that the search had begun, West Virginia University on Sunday announced the hiring of Darren DeVries as West Virginia's 23rd men's basketball coach. The formal press conference will take place here in Morgantown in a couple of days. As we record, they haven't said it yet, but it looks like Thursday uh, at some point. This will be the big one. This will be uh, Coliseum. They'll, they'll take this one out onto the Coliseum floor. Like This isn't like boardroom, anything like that, side room. This isn't even the double conference room. This is, a, <laughs> this is not the one not they the bring. Jerry West well, the, the divider back. Pull the divider yeah, back. No, no not that. No. Will, no, you, will you be the master of ceremonies? Uh, to my knowledge, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. to, at this point, I yeah. will. Um, so we're Did looking they forward. send the email to reserve the Jerry West Lounge? Well, it doesn't. You got to send an email to reserve that room. Like if you want to have a meeting in there, Hop, you got to send an email up. Judy will just block that off, and then you can have well, that room for meetings. Uh, they do that? A couple things. Since, yeah. you've, since you left. Yeah. There is no more Jerry West Lounge. That's that's gone away. It doesn't exist anymore. Oh, it doesn't? No, ever since the expansion of the of the concourse. Not only has that gone away, my old office has gone away. Yeah, I don't done. even know what gates what when I walk in there. <laughs> nah. I went there about it. Well, never mind. It's we got more. We got more important stuff. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, we do. Okay. So let's jump on in. On the program, we're going to talk about uh Darren DeVries, what's it all mean to WVU men's basketball. We'll talk about the women's game against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Brad will have some of the numbers and spreads on stats and then We'll get into textual healing as well. So it was an historic day on Sunday because you've been playing basketball for over 100 years, 
and you're hiring just your 23rd coach. And when you think about it, it's just the fourth coach in the last 40 years, Gail Catlett, um, Gail Catlett, John Beeline, Bob Huggins, Josh Eilert, four. So this is the fifth. Yeah. Um, think about it, Gail Catlett in 78. So it hasn't, doesn't happen often is the point of all that. So it's significant when it does. What does it all mean? We did a uh, eight-minute-ish segment yesterday as the news came out. And now we're going to get a little bit more into the weeds. We start off with Hoppy, who, as everyone who's a regular knows, provides obvious observations and thought. So you're really ready to go because you not only have your laptop open, but you've got a pad leaned up against the the uh, monitor there. See what he's got. So he is he's like almost he's like a teleprompter. It's a blue it's a blue collar <laughs> teleprompter. What do you what do you got on your board there, boy? I have notes. And, and what I'll start with is just. Some of the things most people know, and certainly you all know, but I, I think most of my notes are about the search and the decision. So let me go over that, and then we'll talk about what it all means. But one of the advantages, if there was one, of having your season ending early is that uh, Ren Baker was on the search early. And when he had that press conference after West Virginia got beat in the Big 12 tournament, he says, okay, the search is underway. Really, the search had been underway. He'd been working on this for some time, worked a lot of metrics. So he had an idea early on of the direction that, that he was going. And he got busy very quickly with phone and, uh, and Zoom interviews, which led to in-person interviews. And I believe he had in-person interviews with, with DeVries and also Medved and Byington. Uh, that was part of the process, was in-person interviews. Uh, and what st stood out, my understanding is, to Baker was that, and, and assuming you're already impressed by DeVries' record, by these coaches' records, and what they can do, and Brad will get into that, was that DeVries was a straight shooter and had done his homework. He knew about West Virginia. And if you remember when Neil Brown was hired, remember the story about him, like he had done his homework about West Virginia, knew the history, knew things about West Virginia, watched some tape. And DeVries had done his research about West Virginia, knew the legacy, knew the history, and uh, that prompted at least at one level, his interest in the job. And, De and DeVries was also interested in the fact, as an Iowa guy, and Brad will talk about this, that this is not a metro area, okay? This is not a big city. It's not an urban area. So there was a good fit, um, a good fit for him. And that he was, he was impressed by, and I'm sure we'll talk about this later this week, the passion of the fan base. West Virginia, and we mentioned the fact this West Virginia had this losing season, but still in the last games, 10, 12,000 people showing up. The passion of the fan base for West Virginia basketball, West Virginia sports is well established. It's not a one off, it's well established. Uh, that certainly meant something. Um, also, the timing was good. The timing was good because DeVries had been there for seven years and had done about all you can do in the Missouri Valley Conference. Won the conference, been the NCAA. What more could you do there? after seven years. So the timing was good in terms of him uh, going, uh, going to the next step, going to another job. And that job, as it was explained to me, Brad, he wasn't just looking for a job. He was looking for the job, okay? Because there are a jobs out there, but, but I mean, by that I mean other jobs that will pay you more money and you can go there and they'll hire you. That's different than the job which is specific to the job that you're looking for. So as this process went on, it was evident that things were matching up, what DeVries wanted and what West Virginia wanted. So this thing was coming together. It was a good fit. And, and as that fit got a little tighter as this process went on, then DeVries, I think, was stiff-arming other inquiries. Like, well, wait a minute. I'm not, let, let me see how this thing with West Virginia is going to go. So he was, I'm not sure he was exactly rebuffing other opportunities, but he was not engaging them like he was uh, with West Virginia. And then, um, so the money, and I think that will become evident today or tomorrow. He's, he's making about a million dollars now, I understand it. So you got to pay him something that's equivalent. You can't just pay him like, okay, you were making a million, we'll pay you a million five. You have to pay him something comparable to what a coach coming from where he is to where he's going to be in the Big 12. So I think you're probably talking in the, you know, in the three million dollar range, probably somewhere around in there. Um, and Ren Baker was in a unique position to close this deal because the culture fit was very important um, and always is, I think, or usually is. 
And Ren Baker was in a position to say, I'm a guy from the Midwest. I didn't know anything about West Virginia, or I didn't, I'd never lived here. And I came here and I've been accepted. My family loves it here. Uh, this is a great place to be. So he could make that sincere pitch to a guy with really a similar circumstance coming from the Midwest uh, to here. So, and in fact, I think one of the quotes Ren Baker had to the new coach was, there's no better people than here. And I think we all believe that. And Brad, you can speak to that because you came here and you love it here. So that I, I just want to give you an outline of how I think this how I think this search went. So it was a matter of tar, of finding the right person and then seeing over almost like dating over the course of a couple of days, pretty rapidly, how there is a mutual interest and a mutual affection, and then it got consummated, if you will, on Sunday. Senator. You offer a very unique perspective in this because you are from Iowa. You're a transplanted Iowan who has come to West Virginia. You know this group, the folks around uh, Darren DeVries and what it all means. You, you've lifted weights in his old high school. I, I mean, there was familiarity with coaches and the whole thing. Um, your takeaway. Yeah, I think we'll kind of back into some things, and we'll get to the basketball stuff because I think that's really intriguing, and I think you, you just hired a heck of a basketball coach in this. But let's let's talk about culture here for a second, and, and Hoppy, to piggyback on what you said about the search, and, and guys, we talked about this when the search came open, that this was going to be an attractive job for multiple reasons, and one of those is the support, both fan support and administratively. So if you're a coach looking to come here, you want to have the support. What is that? Fan support was tremendous. We talked about that all season. 10,000 plus late into the season for a team that was struggling to win. So you had that. You know you've got administrative support from Ren Baker and right now Gordon Gee, although I know he won't be the president right. for a long time, but you've got that support right now. You have financial stability, which is important. If you're going to compete in the new area, sure. do you have financial stability? Check, you've got that. And the third part of that with the culture fit, we've got that. So basically what those coaches are asking, can I win there? Can I go there and win? And I do think the fact that the last three coaches have all taken West Virginia to the Sweet 16 or further bodes well if you're outside looking in. If you've got the support and you've got the finances and you've got the tradition, not just the long tradition, not just the Jerry West hot rod tradition, but you've got recent tradition of winning games at this school and you can do that, that's part of what was attractive about this job. And I'll talk more about culture here in a minute. One one correction to Reese was a Drake for six seasons, not seven. That's my error. Um, six, seven, whatever it takes. Yeah. Whatever it takes. The other the other point is, and this this gets into play, and I think this is something that Ren Baker liked, is that DeVries teams are very efficient on both sides of the ball. Because you can go out there and say, okay, we want to we want a coach that's going to like score 98 points. Or we want a coach that's going to lock down defense and hold teams to 55 points. But uh, DeVries' history is for a balanced team, good offensively and defensively, and is disciplined. And that wherever he's been, he's been on an upward trajectory. Okay, it wasn't just, oh, he was here and he won some, but then he lost some, but then he won some. It's been an upward trajectory. Mm -hmm. So can this be the next step in his upward trajectory? Yeah. Let's talk about this a little bit, because you talk about a stable guy in a coaching profession that is unstable. So more than a quarter century, he's been at two places. Creighton, through multiple head coaches, two very good ones, Dane Altman, Greg McDermott, and then on to Drake for those six seasons. That is rare. He's had opportunities both at Creighton and when he's at Drake to go to other jobs, and he hasn't. He was very particular about what he wanted to do. Family's very important to sure. him. We'll talk about that coming up in a little bit. So, yeah, I think this was a job that he's going to. He's not running from something at Drake. He could have stayed at Drake, very involved in the community, obviously deep Iowa roots. He was good at Drake, yep. but this is a job he is is running two and let's talk about drake here for a second we did a little bit of this on our our preview that we put out last night drake's a hard job guys that's in a league that is that is most times a one bid league sometimes two seven ncaa tournaments in drake's history seven total to the ncaa tournament west virginia's had that many since the 2012 season so that gives you some comparison there. There's been some really good coaches at Drake that haven't got teams to the NCAA tournament. DeVries did it three times. Three of those seven all-time come from Darren. Two of those three, he was the lone bid out of their league. So that's a place that is hard to win games, and he did, 20-plus in every season. So this is not only a great fit, this is a heck of a basketball coach. Uh, I've had several people contact me in the last, whatever it's been, 12, 18 hours, uh, since it came down, and besides the basketball part of it, they they tell me, 
You're going to love him because of his activity in the community. It is a true piece of him. It's not a facade of you play the game and say, yeah, we really care about the community. They said, you'll see him out. You'll see his players out. They will make a difference in the community. And I know for some that doesn't mean anything. All you want to do is win. I get all of that. But if you have that totality, I think it does a ton. I'm hearing a lot of the similar comments that I heard when the word came down that John Beeline was going to be coming to WVU, the same kind of thing, getting phone calls going like, oh, you're going to love this guy. People are going to love this dude. Tony, I reached out to the play-by-play announcer for Drake, Michael Admire. And I, I don't know, some question whether he's coming with him or not. I'm not sure. but uh, <laughs> You're a very funny man. He's a very funny man, Brad. This is, this, is <laughs> this is what Admire said. About the coach. He said, he's the kind of guy that eats last at, a, at team meals and unloads bags from the airplane when it's 20 degrees on the tar, 20, minus 20 on the tarmac. Iowa reference. Which is right? not an exaggeration. Yeah. It's been minus 20 on the tarmac many times. He has a huge family that's very supportive. So get used to all the debris rolling through. He's great with both players and fans. He's really honest with players, which I always appreciated, said Admire. Our fan base has been reignited because of him. And one of the cool things... We do know at the conference tournament and the NCAA tournament, one of the things they do is the Bulldog walk. After leaving the hotel and before getting to the arena, the team walks through the pregame pep rally. He's just always thinking about ways to connect the players and the fans. And that's important in West Virginia. It's super important, guys. And let's let's talk about that culture fit for a second. And, and as I said this to you last night, I feel like I can, I can speak confidently in what it's like to move from Iowa to West Virginia. Have done it. Have been to <laughs> Applington, where Darren is from. He... He people in this state are going to like him. He's going to go into areas of this state and say, eh, this looks like exactly where I'm from. He will understand the people of this state. There's a lot of similarities between Iowa and West Virginia in terms of the people. And I think even if you haven't lived in both places, you see that with Iowa State's fan base. Right. Sure. How often do we say, yeah. look at the support that Iowa State gets? It feels very Mountaineer esque. Correct. Right. They go to a bowl game, they sell out the city, they sell out the beer in the city. They're <laughs> packed even when they're not good. Very similar fan bases, very similar people. I think Darren DeFries is going to come in, and people of this state, as he wins games, are going to say, that guy's one of us. I think he's a not just a kind of a good fit, Hoppy. I think this is an excellent fit for this program. Guys, one other thing is that. When you, when you make this hire, I mean, for the last year, well, since early last year, you know, spring of last year, it has been a very unsettling time, to say the least, for Mountaineer basketball. The Huggins situation, which really was, was catastrophic, and then it lingered. And then Josh Eilert and his staff, even though we have praised them appropriately for the job they did, it was a very tough season, interim coach, just a lot of issues. And all, all the whole time you're thinking, okay, there's going to be a coaching search. And then the search was on. Who's going to be? So now you have a point. Now you have a seminal moment where you can say, okay, all that happened. Now you can look forward. Now you have some, some reference point that you can build from. There's a new right. coach. Let's get to go to the new coach. Who's he going to bring? Who's he going to recruit? Who's going to come here? So you have those kinds of stories going forward instead of the uncertainty and the disappointment that has been around for almost a year. That's a good point. Uh, the program has been under a cloud. Um, really since last May with everything that's been going on. And now we're here at the end of March. And so what happens next is the portal is open, as we know. So the next questions become, firstly, who will come with him on his staff? Will there be anyone on the current WVU staff that will be retained? Uh, you got all of those pieces. Think about this, folks. This literal, this decision impacts hundreds of, of people. And that's not an exaggeration because if your staff is 20 people, which is realistic, a 20 person staff, when you take in everybody that's involved, that's 20 plus their families. The players could be as many as all of them and their families and everything that goes along with that. You're talking about over, well over a couple hundred people are impacted in some form and way. We are at the point in the year where a lot of people are going to be able to get up and close and touch him real soon. Not only the press conference on Thursday, later next month in Charleston, April, the annual Charleston Scholarship Dinner that you're very familiar with, mm -hmm. hundreds on hand. And then the Mountaineer Caravan will go this year adding 
Manassas, Virginia, Charlotte, Wheeling, Parkersburg, Wheeling, Parkersburg, Martinsburg, Glade Springs, right? Um, so everyone is going to want to see the new guy. They want to hear him for the first time. They want to get their, you know, they want to get their spin, their feel. So this will go really quick, and that takes you through April. And then with the rules nowadays, of course, practice starts, right? <laughs> you can get on the floor, and they'll do that, and then they're going to Italy the end of June or July into August. And so this is going to happen really super fast because basketball season, football season never end anymore. Mm -hmm. They're just the times where they play the games and the times they don't play games, but it never ends. <laughs> so I think it will be a really fast-paced, really intriguing, fun time for fans just to kind of keep track, okay, what do we got? What do we got? Yeah. Because these rosters nowadays are completely malleable, unlike any other time. And it is possible, and you can take a look at Texas Tech this year. Right? Grant McCaslin won the NIT last season, so he was a very late hire at Texas Tech, and he had to replace 10 impacted West Virginia, obviously. They took Joe Toussaint, uh, among others, and they had a really good year, and they're in the NCAA tournament. So it's going to be quite a fascinating time to see how the whole thing uh, goes. But, again, regardless of the flexibility that you now have, Unfortunately, you also have to keep in this, this in mind. You can't make year one become year two. This is going to be the year where you're going to put your foundation and your principles down. And that part of it, sometimes, you ha it takes time. You can speed it up quicker, but you, there are certain things that just take time to get. Brad, I have a question for you, really both of you. And that is, to what degree did Drake utilize the NIL to smaller school? And now you're at... You're coming here where you it's all about the NIL. Yeah, it, it, it'll be different. It'll be different. And that's one of the things you start to look at personnel. Darren DeVries had had really good personnel at Drake. Just take this year for a second. We'll, we'll talk about his son Tucker in a minute, two-time player of the year out of the Missouri Valley, because if the transfer portal starts with Tucker DeVries, that's a heck of a pickup for West Virginia. So we'll get to that in a minute. But they had multiple players in there. They, they did a really good job of recruiting and building a team with guys that fit different positions to allow them to play. This will be a different deal, having some money at your disposal to be able and go out and, and recruit. But that's something you welcome, right? That's part of the reason you make the move from Drake to a West Virginia is it provides you some resources to go out and get the guys you need to compete at this level. And you're talking about a guy that's done it at Creighton, right? A, a major basketball school that knows what it looks like when you go get those type of players. So that'll, that'll be, he'll be excited about that, having some resources. The science of the game will come in now in the new world that we're living in is how do you spend that money? I mean, it's, it's fair to say that nowadays to compete in the Big 12, you probably need to be in the $2 million range to $2.5 million range, and some maybe Kansas might be at $3 million range to get these players. West Virginia is in that ballpark. They're right there, and they're not under two. They're somewhere between. And so how you spend your money is like – it's not just – I mean, how you spend that money. Sure. Player type. What am I looking for? It doesn't necessarily have to be – the, the, the shiniest star, but if this guy can do exactly what I need to have him do and I can go get him because I know that's what I have to have, and that becomes a $75,000 expenditure, but I know I just got that one piece that I need that to some doesn't look really shiny and fancy, that's the magic of this game right now. Mm -hmm. It's not going out there and getting – the, the, because as you can see, i.e. several schools that got bounced out of this tournament, it doesn't matter. If you get stars, it matters if you get the ingredients that can make your recipe. Hop, here's my sense. I just said it a second ago. Drake was constructed really well. My sense is this is a guy that is going to understand how to deploy those dollars to cover a roster rather than just throwing money at a couple players and hope you get a couple good guys, and then we'll have a hope and a prayer that they work together. My sense is this is a guy that understands how to build a team and will take those added resources that maybe he hasn't been able to work with before and deploy those appropriately to get a team in. Now, does it happen in year one? We'll see. As it goes on, this is a guy that's going to instill a culture and a plan of attack with those dollars. So I would say this to you, Hop, on a personal level. He needs to be a little bit more liberal in his spending than you. Um, because you <laughs> no, were the last. I take a shot at you. 
You I were was, the last was, guy. Was, was, you were the last guy in Morgantown that had a tube television. Well, that is true. So he, yeah, I mean, right, Brad. I mean, fair. Well, that part's true. And so I true. think you need to kind of do look at, like don't go to them and offer them, you know, um, gift certificates to the beanery and say, hey, if you come play it, right, Brad? I mean, I think you probably. I mean, that might be a nice added bonus there. But yeah, was, so get a free meal some would say I'm judicious. Yeah. Others but, would say just tighter than Dick's hat band. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the uh, graphics here. Uh, a little bit more on who Darren DeVries is, our crack staff. Uh, so here we go. As an assistant coach, 17 years, as Brad mentioned earlier, under Dana Altman and Greg McDermott. Those two guys had great success. I mentioned during our Sunday taping that he was a part of that NCAA game between West Virginia and Creighton in 2005, which is a great, great game. Um and, and while there, that staff won 68% of their games, which is a really stupid number. Next up, moving on. At Drake, six seasons as the head ball coach. Crazy record, 150 and 54. Three tournament appearances, twice named coach of the year in the league. 122 wins is the most in any five-year period at the school. 20-plus in five consecutive years, never done before. Drake's first NCAA tournament victory in 50 years and a 65% winning percentage in March. You know what stands out to me of all those, and all those impressive numbers, is all six seasons never won fewer than 20 games. Yeah, and there was, usually, one, season, yeah. There was one season with 20. Yeah. Everything else was well above yeah. the 20. So, I mean, usually over six years as well, a little bit off with like almost 16 wins yeah. or something, and always won 20 The guys won, and I'll, I'll say it again, guys. I mean, Gary Garner couldn't get to an NCAA tournament there. My guy Rudy Washington, he struggled to get there. Rudy Washington. Tom Abeta Marco, year, <laughs> almost two years, couldn't, couldn't get to an NCAA tournament. Tom Davis, the great Tom Davis, came in there, turned it over to his son, Keno. Keno did get to one, Hoppy. Keno got to one NCAA tournament. Didn't he won and done it? Who? Keno. Yeah. Yeah, he got won to an NCAA done. tournament, went to Providence. He went to the – hey, so which one offered you at Drake? Abeta Marco. Abeta Marco offered you. Well, you think that was the greatest uh, disappointment in his career? That I didn't say yes? Yeah. Yeah, but he was gone shortly thereafter. Okay. But now remember, Tom, Tom Davis, I accepted a, an off, a walk-on offer from Tom Davis at, when he was at Iowa. Right. Now he went to Drake later. Now the, the assistant coach that we corresponded with, Rudy Washington, also a Drake coach. A lot of Drake ties there, Hoppy. Oh, awesome. Followed this program for a long time. Hey, one more slide. Evidently. Hey, uh, Austin, put up one more slide here. This is our high level of sophistication. Um, played for Eldon Miller as a player at Northern Iowa. Yeah. El Brad what? what about Eldon Miller? Go ahead. You were going to tell no, you. No, go you go ahead. Say it. Well, he, he just, he missed on me. <laughs> I've heard this story so many times, I can tell it. Yeah. Scored over 1,000 points. Uh, he was a scholar <laughs> athlete, team captain. He's in the Iowa High School Hall of Fame. All four brothers and sister played collegiate sports. Brother Jared, All-American at Iowa, 12 seasons in the NFL, Hoppy, Detroit Lions. He'd hit you right in the face. And his wife is Ashley. He's got two kids. We've already mentioned Tucker, who is expected to join his dad here, and Tatum, the daughter, a freshman high schooler, Brad. Is that where we're Probably a recruiting eighth battle grade. on for Tatum. Yep. Eighth grade, Hop? Eighth, I understand she's eighth grade. Probably a battle on for her. So you think Morgantown and University are lining up their NILs right now? I, I would think so. I don't know. Pretty good combination over there at uh, Morgantown. So, I mean, you got Coach Kellogg's daughter over here. Quite a tandem. So Eldon Miller was at the WVU Coliseum. <laughs> Brad accosted him. <laughs> Brad approached him and introduced himself, being polite. Coach, Brad Howe here. You missed on me when you were coach at Iowa. Eldon Miller said, oh, you, oh, you fine young man. Yes, good to he see you. He even told him the kid that he recruited over me. <laughs> you know, Nick Nurse, current coach of the 76ers, played for Eldon Miller at Northern Iowa, which is where Darren DeVries played, obviously. Is that, Great uh, history Once there. again, Great history. Iowa is just the center. The center. Yeah. And then you take um, Iowa football. Everything comes out of there, too. Came out of there. Let's, yeah. get, a, let's get a Hayden Fry reference. It's a, set, it's a, cent, it's a center of all now, One of his brothers went to Wartburg College, of course. Where you Shout went? out to all my Wartburg alum friends. Sure. <laughs> Your Iowa connections have been invaluable throughout this story, Brad. <laughs> it's well, kind of wild. I, think, I, I really do. I think people are going to like Darren. We'll get into his style of play. We'll get into the on-court stuff here in a second. But, you know, here's the other thing, guys, real quick before you go to the music. I also think what this does, Hop to and Tony, to piggyback on your 
your message here that it's a time where, where the turmoil of the last year can be put aside, that there's some hope now around this program, right? Isn't that the best thing about sports? Yes. That you get some hope. And there is the cyclical nature of it that you're down, and you've said it many times on this show, you're not going to be down forever. You're going to come back up. And it, it feels as if today, and you have to see when the game start, but it feels as if today there can be a rallying of this fan base to get together and have some hope for a new basketball coach that points this program back in the direction we all think it should be. Yep. So, welcome to Darren DeVries. Are you uh, you ready to do some spreads on stats? Sure. What are you going to bring us with? What do you want to start with? The Iowa women's game tonight? West Virginia women, or you want to do a little Darren DeVries first? Well, I got so both. Might as well. What do you, what do you want to do? It's a dealer's choice. Let's do, let's do DeVries first in his style of play. Hit it! So, I check the numbers. We'll just go right to the numbers. Here comes Might as well. Hand. We'll just go right to the numbers. Let's jump into the... Uh, Spreads on Stats is brought to us by the Conley CPA Group. Who are they? You might say to yourself, well, who they are. They happen to be the greatest combination of CPAs in the state of West Virginia. Ever accumulated. Ever. ever. This is the, like, you remember Dream Team? Yep. Remember Jordan? Bird. Bird and all those. This is the Dream Team of, of, of accountants. Conley CPA Group, based in Fairmont, but clients throughout the 55 counties of our state and surrounding states, been doing it since 1985. They've stood the test of time. They provide full accounting services, taxing, and all of the consultations that business owner needs so that they pay enough, pay their fair share, but don't pay too much. It's the Conley CPA Group. They're the only accountants in our state and across the world right now that aren't nervous that tax day deadline day is approaching. They just like, give me the ball. I got it. I'll take, what is it, down two? Okay, I'll hit a three. What do you need? Down two? I get three free throws? I'll make all three. See you later. Conley CPA Group. Can I give you a stat before you start? Sure. I did a dig last week on this one. So, to me, we, we had 65% winning percentage in March for Darren DeVries. I think that's massive because that's really all that matters. Are you playing in March and are you winning in March? 65% really good. So my other one was, what's your record when you're trailing at halftime? Good stat. Right? That's real good. You got to cut this in context, though, right? He's 44% when he trails at halftime. You can do some math on some others. I didn't see any other. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't do the whole cross base, but that's really good. That's, that's coaching. That's halftime. And you take a look at last week. He's down at halftime. Took an eight-point lead. Came storming back in the start of the second half. They go six for 14 from the foul line. Can't win. Can't win. Anyway, I didn't mean to, to uh, no, was good. supplant your numbers by yeah, any stretch. Not at all. I like that. Okay, go ahead. All right, let's get into some stuff. And Hoppy, by the way, Eldon Miller did miss, just for the record. <laughs> just want to point that out. If, if you had gone there and had success, who knows? Maybe today we'd be saying, who is this Brad Howe, this head, new head coach? Head coach Brad Howe. I probably wouldn't have played a lot. <laughs> That's all right. Oh, Some really of the great, good in practice. Probably the great coaches yeah. don't play a lot. Yeah, they just probably study. Right. Probably right. Probably right. All right, let's talk about, let's do some general stuff on this, and then we'll dive into some specifics. But, guys, here's, here's a profile of, of what Darren's teams have been the last few years at Drake. Really good shooting teams, both from two and three. They're a low turnover team offensively, so they protect the basketball. Now, they don't get to the free throw line much, but a lot of that's just because they're efficient on the perimeter with the shooting. Really solid defensively, and, and one of the – one of their key components defensively, they'll, they're really aggressive. I, I spent a few minutes last night watching a preview of one of his practices. Excuse me? Wow, well, I was previewing one of his practices, <laughs> working on going under screens or over screens oh, and how you do, how much do we yeah, talk about that like gosh, what do you yeah, what do you do around screen and yeah, what, what's what is well, his philosophy there's a screens. lot of coaches out there that can tell you what to do now his philosophy is well the player choose go go over or under just get through the blankety blank screen so it's a lot of effort don't let yourself be screened fight that thing and whatever you're going to do if you're going under then pop back out and it was really fun to watch their <laughs> drill they did like a shell drill and those dudes were getting it so you're basically saying okay here's how we're going to play this here's how we're going to defend the ball screen i don't care he, you better be there <laughs> it's your choice yeah you, you want to go over you want to go under i don't care what you just get, get over there. or under the damn thing and get by the guy that's trying to screen you, you you're tougher than he is get around it you better be face to face with the uh, with the guy with the ball Again, Darren, a really good football player in high school. Brother played 12 years in the NFL. I don't think he's afraid to run right through your chest. No. Hits you right in the face. 
Yeah, this year our metaphorically, our, of course, our yeah, ball screen, yeah. our ball screen defense was horrendous. So I think you're going to get that from him. You're going to get great effort defensively. They've been an elite defensive rebounding team for a number of years now. Last year, I believe they were second nationally in defensive rebounding. So that's one of the the pieces of magic on the defensive end is just don't give up second chance points. Get on the defensive mm-hmm. glass, and you may make your first shot, and you better make your first shot because you're not getting a second, and you're probably not getting a third. They only gave up. Drake only gave up seven second chance points this past season to its opponents per game. Wait, wait, ho- hold on. Wow. What? Seven second chance points per game to its opponents. Oh this my year. gosh! Now they had a really talented big, a six ten guy, which a lot of times at that level it's hard to find size that's really good. He'll leave Drake as the all time leading rebounder. Really good, so that helps you. But seven second chance points. That's ridiculous. I'm not suggesting you can translate that right to the Big Twelve, but a lot of rebounding is what? Well, it's effort. Effort, right? And yeah. And want to. Well, which to is your a point. Defense. To your point here. You don't mind if I jump in? No, go ahead, okay. please. This is this is a collaborative effort here. So when I was talking, Hoppy, about how you deal in the transfer portal, okay, you have to go get guys. And so when he recruits these guys, he has to make one thousand percent sure that the guy I'm talking to is going to be willing to either go over or mm-hmm. under, but mm-hmm. go get the person. Right. And if there's any hesitation that you're not going to do either of those, as we had on this team this past season, you just kind of, eh, you don't come here. You won't play for you him. Don't, you don't yeah. get to come here. So he'll, by, by nature, that's the guy that you have to, you have to have. Again, this is about ingredients. And if you're not going to go through or go through someone's chest, you're not, you can't play here. See ya. Anyway. So it's a pretty simple formula to win games. Hard to execute, obviously. It's pretty simple. You make your shots, you don't turn it over, and you only give them limited shots. So there it is, Hop. There's yeah. your formula. Yeah. Pretty, I don't know why everybody doesn't do that. Pretty easy. That's <laughs> why so everybody just say that. Why, that, that well, you philosophy. know why? Because, because everybody wants to, wants to score 30 and doesn't want to play defense and because that. It's really hard. What's his pace of play? Hold on, we'll get into some of this. Stay with me. See, I jumped ahead. Of one, yeah. What's one mark of a uh, what people often say, a really good coach, a mark of them is, okay, they run really good stuff, fine. They get great effort out of their players. But if you, you've, you've sat next to me enough here now, you niche down into some of these advanced numbers, and what's an area, I'm being vague here, I'm probably not leading you far enough, an area that you look at and say, yeah, they're really good coming out of timeouts are you really good coming out of Slobs timeouts or blobs generally if you're good coming out of a timeout coaches respect that a lot right they say that's really good coach he's really good coming josh out of Island did a really good job really out of good. timeouts they were very good out of timeouts drake was top 10 percent nationally this past season out of i timeouts. like that runs good, runs good stuff runs good stuff runs good stuff highest compliment stuff. <laughs> you can give a coach off it runs good stuff runs good stuff, <laughs> runs good stuff. Hoppy, wait till you see defreeze they ain't run good stuff <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll be a good one okay offense let's stay on offense for a second so Here's different categories. You've heard me talk, all right, this team is really good on cuts to the basket. This team is really good spot-up shooters. This team's really good at posting up. They're good at offensive rebounding. Here's what Drake was elite at under DeVries. Elite spot-up shooters, both two and three. Elite with the pick-and-roll ball handler. Elite on cuts to the basket, meaning they can also do what, Tony? Pass it. Pass it at well. Elite post-ups. Again, they had a really good big in the middle. That helped them. Elite when they had to ISO. Elite when they did handoffs. That's a lot of different play categories right there. They were very, very good What are all those fundamentals? I think you're going to get a pretty good fundamental team here. You got to be able to pass it. You got to yeah, catch yeah. it. Helps. Hey, Hop. Yes. This 24 team for them. Yep. Love the left corner three. Fifty percent on the season from the left corner three. Wow! They made yes on a hundred plus attempts. Fifty percent from the dead left corner from three. How many different guys? I'm pretty good. A bunch of different guys. All right, here because uh, I got I got pretty deep here into these zones. I won't I'll I won't, I won't bury y'all with all the Stunner. zones. Stunner. I'll I'll just niche it this way. Over the last three or four seasons, okay. Here's kind of a profile of them shooting the ball. And tell me if this sounds like modern basketball or not, Hop, because you, you, right? we talk modern basketball. What do you mm-hmm. want to do? Mm-hmm. Rim and three. Mm-hmm. Rim and three. Although they're very good from two, too. <laughs> Don't pass up the two. You can be efficient from two. 67% field goal percentage at the rim over the last four seasons. Above the national average for that time by about 6%. So very good when they get to the rim. Hoppy, they love the right and left elbow twos. If they can get into old that mid-range. School, old school. Mid-range elbow jumper. In that jumpers. Mid-range. Mid-range elbow jumper. jumpers. Mm-hmm. Top 20% nationally field goal percentage from those areas in the last three seasons. Okay? How about this? Each of the last three seasons, Drake was a top five nationally in at least one three-point shooting zone. 
So we've talked before, I'm counting five zones around the outside. Two corners, two wings, and top of the key. In every season for the last three, at least one of those zones, Drake was a top five field goal percentage team from three. So that tells me what? They like to shoot the three, they get good shooters, but they're also not just a wing shooting team. They've done it from all different areas mm-hmm. around. So really good elite shooting team here as well. That's impressive. Those are impressive numbers. I mean, that, that, I got more, but that, we, I figure we got plenty of time. Like before the Italy well, trip, we'll, we'll move down into some stuff as but well. That, but what you're talking about, what those numbers show is what Ren Baker talked about generally. We talked about balance. Okay. Balance, hard nose. That's what that is. Yeah. You know, and if you're good at the fundamentals, even if you don't have, you know, an NBA draft guy, and maybe you do. Then if you're good at those fundamentals, what happens, Tony? Many times. Mm -hmm. Teams that are balanced, I get, and and me in particular, I I tend to default to the offensive side because you want to see what they run offensively. But this was a group that if you you take their season-long numbers at Drake this past season, top 10% nationally offense in terms of rating, 100 possessions, defensively top 15%. So they can do it both and have done it both. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, good research. Uh, I think it's. I know the, we can't go four hours, so I'll just leave it right there. We'll have more of this as we move throughout the. Summer. I think it's fair to say, and not hyperbole, <laughs> to say that this was the most comprehensive coaching search in West Virginia basketball history. And I say yeah. that, and I say that this way, because the game has changed to the point where analytics are now very, very front and center, and Ren Baker. Uh, had a spreadsheet that could choke a horse as far as breaking down candidates and numbers. And he, he will admit that he's obsessed with people that have high winning percentages, but there's so much more than that. And you take a look at his hires, Ben McCollum, who very well could be the next Drake head coach. Maybe. Who's at Northwest Missouri State, or uh, he could go to Missouri State. And Grant McCaslin, who won at North Texas, who we hired, and then Obviously, as I just mentioned, he went to Texas Tech and NCAA. So he has a really good feel for this, and I think he punched his numbers, and he said, okay, this is it. On well, the, on the numbers, I, I, I talked to Gordon Gee, and look, Gordon Gee's a pretty smart guy. He said his eyes glazed over. He looked at the metrics, and they're like, what, okay, what do, you, what do you got here? I mean, so – that, but well, I know a, yours do that when I get into my numbers here too, so you can relate to. Gordon no, no, Gee, I, pay, I no, I pay attention because you know why? Because I learned something. Well, here, here's what I'd say about numbers, guys, and and I know we have fun with it and the spreads on stats, and and I love going in there, hop just to make you giggle and and find and <laughs> find a spot from the right elbow that they shoot forty two percent. But here, here's what the those numbers do is if you follow this program and listen to this program as we establish those scouting reports how accurate they yeah, can be, right? I mean, trends. there's, a, they, they there's use, a reason, Tony, that so many now teams are recognizing the importance of those analytics that we talk about on here and how you use them. It does build your profile. It does allow you to do a coaching search in a different way instead of just saying, oh, I've seen that guy on TV. He looks pretty good, <laughs> right? This is, you can get down in the nitty gritty when you get the culture and the fit stuff from talking to them and talking to people around them. All right, that still has to be done that way. But the basketball stuff, you can get into these numbers and get yeah. a really good sense of what these teams and what these coaches like to do. And I think that gives you some confidence as you go in hiring. And I think that's what you're talking about with Ren. He was able to whittle that list down to 15, then to 10, then to three to five guys. And here they fit the profile of what I think you need to win in this league. And it's it's you're doing what we do each, each week on the show of identifying what those teams do. Three guys before the game brought to us by Comax Business Systems. What do you say we talk about your phone system today? If you're a business owner, and it needs to be updated, i.e. your phone system. Think about this. So many benefits to a new phone system, and Comax has those for you. Whichever way you want to do it, you can buy it, you can lease it, you can rent it. And nowadays with technology, this business system and your phone system will basically, it'll it'll be full court defense. In other words, you work for this business, and they've got that phone on them, Wherever they go, you've got that constant contact that you need. As now and now, more and more, we work remotely. They've got it from one line to 1,000 lines. They can take care of all your phone service needs. Digital phone services completely available to you, and they will come in and do a free estimate. And they are efficiently and competitively priced. Visit Comax Business Systems, ComaxWV.com. Three guys also brought to us by Lou Wendell. Marine sales in St. Albans. We told you. 
I mean, we told you nice weather was coming. It's sunny out. Senator and I went for a morning coffee. No jackets. <laughs> nice walk. No jackets. And as we walked to the... Oh, now you're walking together. Yeah, and as we walked to the coffee shop, I looked across. I looked across High Street. I looked across University Avenue, and I saw the river. And I saw water. And I said, where there's water, there's a pontoon. <laughs> and if there's a pontoon, it's got to come from Lou Wendell Marine Sales in the other St. Way. Albans. Where there's a pontoon, there's water. But there's... You remember when that mall came in there? The new mall <laughs> yes, yes, I do. What was the line the guy used? Where once there was a mountain, now there's a mall. <laughs> <laughs> and Hoppy went like, I don't necessarily know if that's a good thing. But anyway, anyway. right now at uh, Lou Wendell Marine Sales, they offer the 2023 Avalon Tri-Tune Venture 85 CR 23-foot pontoon. Now, you think Coach, uh, you think Coach uh, DeVries... Probably wants a pontoon, don't you think? Would would think. Now again, Iowa not known for its great bodies of water. Now there <laughs> are a couple really water. nice lakes. His brother lives in an area called Clear Lake, right? That's a very popular boating community okay. up there. Sailorville Lake, of course, hop. Probably course. have heard of that. I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of Lou Wendell Marine Sail boats out there. Oh, they ship not them right over there. Not that far from Michigan. I mean, you just go right down to Iowa, drop it right on Sailorville Lake. <laughs> You're just out there. So I would think I would think Coach DeVries will love. Love Cheat Lake. Greatest, uh, it's the greatest time of the year to buy at Lou Wendell Marine Sales because the selection is as big as it will be all year long. And we have learned that it takes six months when you order one of these things. So go and look at the inventory that they have online at LouWendellMarineSales.com. That's LouWendellMarineSales.com. And ask them about the three guys special. Okay, so now we're going to do a, we're going to do the quick. That's our four second spreads on stats. Hit me with Caitlin uh, Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes. All right, let's go. And you got to listen to this maybe on one and a half speed since the game's coming up here in just a little bit this by the time be, this is might out. Might be two. Although me on one and a half speed's tough listen. Because it, it goes like yeah. four and a half times. All right, I'll try. Here we go. Hoppy, Iowa women's basketball. Overview. They run, they hunt threes, and then they attack you at the rim if you run them off the three point line. Right. This is a, if, if your team's not playing them, this is a really fun style of basketball to watch. There's not a lot of wasted dribbling. There is really elite passing. There's three-point shooting. Their offensive numbers are absolutely silly. A quick rundown. They're 100th percentile nationally, which is which is good, Hop. About as good as it gets. 100th percentile in 100%, offensive yes. rating, effective field goal percentage, two-point field goal percentage, points per game, and assists per game on the offensive side. 100th percentile. Here's how... Iowa has been attacked in losses, and let's see if West Virginia matches up in any of these categories. You're going to need some help with some missed threes from them. You saw that the other night in their first half against Holy Cross. They were struggling to get going. They're one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country, 38% from three. In their losses, that drops all the way to 25. So no surprise. For a team that relies on the three, if you can get them on a night when they're missing or force misses to them, then you've got a chance to hang around. You have to score with them. That's oh, really that's hard, hard to do. I just mentioned one of the best <laughs> offensive team in multiple categories, but they don't have many weaknesses. Really, the about the only one you can find is their defense, Hop. They're just 47th percentile on the season when it comes to defensive ratings. In losses, that drops all the way to the second percentile. Teams score 109 points per 100 possession in their losses. So they're a team that just wants to outscore you, which makes sense. Caitlin Clark can get 60 when she wants. So it's a team that you can get shots against. You can get threes. You can run on them. They're just as happy to play you 195 as they are to play you 60 to 55. Yeah. So can you score with them? Listen, guys, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, it is hard to out Iowa, Iowa. You're going to have to have an element of that. They've got to miss some shots. You've got to make a ton of threes tonight, and you've got to try and stay hot with them scoring-wise. Can you hit the offensive glass on them? Iowa isn't great defensively, but they do get a ton of defensive rebounds. Opponents are only getting nine second-chance points per game against them. Hop and losses, that number jumps to 15. So not a big difference, but can you be closer to that 15 than the nine and see if you can stay in this game? The problem, though, that's not West Virginia's forte. They're just 43rd percentile nationally in offensive rebounding percentage. West Virginia gets about 11 second chance points per game. Need to find a couple more tonight. Free throw rate. West Virginia's women's team relies on this a lot, much like we talked about the men all year. West Virginia's top 10% nationally in free throw rate. That drops to bottom 10% in West Virginia's losses. 
So we've said when teams pack it in and you rely only on the three, that has not been a good formula for West Virginia. So I think you'll be able to get to the basket at times. Can you get some foul calls in Carver-Hawkeye Arena tonight? You ready to ask a question there? No, I have some things. Direct quotes from Caitlin Clark. Okay, hold okay. on. Let me give one more and then jump in with Caitlin. Sure. Here. One more. I was only faced to press on 2% of their possessions this season. We know West Virginia likes to press. They didn't face more than 18 possessions of full court pressure in any one game this year. The three teams that pressed them double digit possessions uh, lost all three. Iowa handled that. It's no surprise, right? You have one of the best passers in women's basketball history in Caitlin Clark. You have all five players that can dribble. They move the ball without dribbling, and all five players can, can handle if they need to. Top 1% nationally in points per possession against the press. So limited sample size. They've chewed it up when they've seen it. So we'll see if West Virginia's press causes some problems, but this is a really difficult team to press, not just because of Caitlin Clark, but because of the other four as well. So the buzz around their first round game against Holy Cross was that Caitlin Clark did not play well. Mm -hmm. So this is what she said in preparation for tonight's game. But West Virginia better be ready, like, from the moment the ball goes in the air. Coming out with a strong start will be really important for us. I think that goes for any game. But our group has played in quite a few March Madness games where we did not come out and set the tone. And we were able to take a breath and respond. I think understanding we're not going to win by 25 points, that's not what this is at this point. It's going to come down to single possessions, and you have to execute possessions. You need to get offensive boards. We need not to turn the ball over. Little things like that. And she said, our group knows better than anybody this is a game that is going to be close. It doesn't really matter what number is next to your name. That's what makes this tournament so fun. You've got to come out ready to play. Georgia gave us a great battle last year. It just shows how important singular possessions are in these types of games. Well, that's not good because you, you have an absolute well, you have an absolute sharpshooter, um, one of the all-time greatest players going like, I'm bringing it. Hope you bring it. She's an assassin and will be ready to go in what will be a hoppy, a bonkers environment. Not only that's not only a sellout, that will be a sellout that's on its ear in her final home game. So West Virginia's ability to handle that atmosphere is going to be important early. A couple of observations. One is that props to West Virginia for having the season they had, win the first round game, and now be just by the draw on the national stage for this game. Sure. That's amazing. Sure. That's incredible. The second thing is, and we've seen a lot of sports and a lot of sports events over the years and uh, you've seen a lot of games a lot of big games a lot of events and to me this went from big game to event to phenomenon yeah and by that I mean that her her impact has increased geometrically Mm -hmm. okay it hasn't gone from two to four and four to six it's gone from two to four four to eight eight to sixteen and it is a phenomenon it is a cultural event and it's remarkable you don't see that very often but it's happened. And, and when it gets to that point, it builds on itself. Okay? Everybody picks up on it. Like, uh, normal news organizations are covering it. ESPN has somebody specifically assigned to it. But it, but it goes beyond sport. And it goes into the popular culture. It's, it's, like, the, it's like the Taylor Swift of basketball. Yeah, that's, a, that's, no, that's, actually, fair. that's actually a good analogy on, on what she's done and what, where she is right now. There's, there's a couple things tonight. One, on the Caitlin Clark side of things, what scares you from a West Virginia perspective is in every one of those instances, it's what's impressed me most about her. Her, her individual skill is really good. She shows up in big moments. Mm-hmm. She hasn't been overwhelmed by the night going to break the record. Instead, she came out and scored the first nine points, launched, launched logo three. That thing's over. All right, what's next? She, she is a stone-cold assassin. There's a lot of Jordan and Kobe behavior and traits within her she's just super talented the flip side is the West Virginia thing you were talking about in the open they're in a great spot here they're in a great spot they go in and Caitlin Clark scores 55 on you and you get run out of the gym okay so be it right you had a wonderful season you just mentioned exceeded expectations first coach in West Virginia history to win your first uh, tournament game in your first year that team has achieved a ton and is set up nicely for the future if you go in and play with Iowa for a half for three quarters, if you're able to do it for four quarters, that just enhances your brand significantly. Sure. There's there's literally almost no downside to this game tonight. There, West Virginia, John Antonic told me this today from WVU, that West Virginia is the last team in the tournament with a first-year head coach. Probably. Yeah. If John said it, it's true. He writes books. Yeah. Authors never lie. 
I done. think this is one of those moments. If, you, if embrace the moment, if you're West Virginia was women's basketball team, this is this is a, a a historic event that you're playing college basketball's all time leading scorer in her final home game in her building. Mm -hmm. Go in and have some fun with this and see how you line up. No one knows what her career will become as a professional, but potentially, this is one of those things where if she continues to go on and play at this level that she did professionally. You can go back and you look at this thing 10, 15 years down the road, and that would be kind of similar to saying, like, yeah, I played against Maravich, yeah. right? Or I played against the Jerry West of women's basketball. You know what I mean? It's like that type of a level. Potentially it could be. You don't know, again, how things will go, injuries and things like that. But you got an opportunity. You get one chance if you're mm -hmm. West Virginia. It is a glorious moment. You just go play your ass off. And what's, what's cool about it, too, is that, and Brad, you can relate to this because you have girls and uh, one or both play basketball. They both play basketball? One. One, one play basketball. Is that how many times they show all those shots in the gym, in the arena, and all those girls. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's impact. That, that is driving girls to participate in sports. You know, they are. They Huge. Have, you know, so that's a huge impact, yeah. like like Tiger Wolf, Tiger uh, Woods and golf. Yeah, right? it, I mean, in in the state of Iowa, I'm saying it's past that too. It's it's boys too. I mean, that's crossed over gender there mm -hmm. on on what she has meant and and what she's meant to the women's game. So yeah, I think this is this is really fun. You talk about it a lot. We talk about it almost every one of our football broadcasts about being nationally relevant. Mm -hmm. You're you're West Virginia. You're nationally relevant tonight. All eyes are on you. Primetime slot, 8 p.m. ESPN. This will be a lot of fun. Let's Take your it. swings. You're exactly right. 8 p.m. on ESPN. I mean, it's the equivalent of Monday night football. Mm -hmm. That's the Monday night football of the spring. All right. Hey, one, two, three, let's do this. See what I did there, Hoppy? Cued into that song. Yeah, you don't, need to, you don't need to count down on the air, though. You can. Back to my DJ days. Yeah, I probably shouldn't count down. Though. Did I show you that picture of Garrett Green and Saab? Yes. Right, we use that. Did we use it? Yeah, we used it. We used it. Yeah. Sob. Was it right. the was it the home uh, home base from Pat White, right? Yeah, when they, when Daphne, it was in Alabama. Daphne, Alabama. Three guys before the game textual healing is a little more mojo for yeah. the upcoming season there. Three guys before the game textual healing brought to us by episode 800.com. You know, if we were smart, we probably would have episode 800.com on that graphic. But again, no one's ever called us smart. Episode800.com, where you can buy all of our stuff. That includes our award-winning coffee, Game Day Grind, our award-winning popcorn, Mountaineer Munch, and all of our apparel. And all three of us are wearing our apparel today. Hoppy's got the uh, Adidas. What's your brand here, Brad? What are you wearing? Peter Millar. Oh, that's Peter Millar? Mm -hmm. Hoodie. Oh, I didn't know that. Nice. That's, that is yeah. nice. And uh, I got a Peter Millar on, too. Okay, so let's jump into this thing, man. I'd like to address the elephant in the room. No. May I? Yeah. First, I'm going to read a couple of things, and then I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Okay. It's not Go the ahead. first elephant we've addressed on this show. In fact, we've addressed enough elephants that we could be in a, in a zoo. <laughs> first one. It was just uh, five, five words, four words, and an abbreviation. Said, Thamel got hoppy again, LOL. <laughs> Another one came in, said, Thamel, 7 p.m., hoppy, 7.05 p.m. Next one came in, got Pete Thamel breaking the news at 7.18 and hoppy at 7.20, unofficial time. Texter, did hoppy beat his arch nemesis Pete Thamel to the punch on reporting the DeVries hire? Next one, did hoppy call Pete Thamel to find out who the next West Virginia basketball coach is? Go Mountaineers. Ouch. Will Pete be taken over? Texter. See there, Hoppy, you got some timestamps on that thing. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, Unfortunately. Well, hang on. First and foremost, this texter says, I have been and forever will be hashtag Team Hoppy. So with that being said, in all due respect, I regretfully point out the following. Our generation's greatest correspondent did not, in fact, beat Pistol Pete Thamel to the news. What's more, he did not finish second, as made clear by the attached pictures. However, I don't feel this is a reflection of his ability to break the news, but rather a commitment to purity in journalism. What I mean is anyone who stays this dedicated to carrying a hanky probably couldn't care less about Twitter, but rather spend his first several critical minutes sending news out over widely used media, such as smoke signals, telegrams, or carrier pigeons. So I say, way to go, Hoppy. Thamel Thank can you. kick rocks. Stay well. God bless Philip in Tampa. Thank you, Philip. So 
here's the deal. <laughs> As you know, if you're a regular on this program, I have had a great deal of fun poking Hoppy about Pete Thamel. And for whatever reason, Hoppy took umbrage on a couple of things that Thamel uh, got in front of and reported it. And I said, Hoppy, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. But I will say this. To, uh, to besmirch Hoppy in this particular situation regarding the uh, hiring of the basketball coach would be not only unfair, it would be incorrect. Here's the deal. Hoppy had it. We had it. We just didn't push the button. If you take a look, we recorded our eight-minute segment yesterday at 5 p.m. that Darren DeVries was West Virginia's head coach. And this studio is used at 6 p.m. by the sports line guys. So we had, we recorded. We had it. We just, as this one texter wrote, we were being journalistically absolutely accurate because we've seen so many of these stories crumble. And as I've tried to school Hoppy on, it doesn't matter who gets it first. It matters that you get it right. And when we had it, we hit you guys with a boatload of information right off the bat. So I'm not going to pee on Hoppy. Oh, thank you. We had it. You had it. We had it. We had it for, but you have to dot the I and cross the T. I can give you five head coaches who have gone to podiums and walked away from jobs. So, like, as I've always said, these are the hardest jobs to get. So, hey, Pete, I like Pete. Pete's great. Pete was right on top of it, as usual. We also had it. Just didn't push the button. That's all. I did. Well, thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's you, the kind you, of surprise you that it, I did. It, it yeah, does yeah. surprise you thought I was going to crush you. Because you could have, maybe Brad will. You could have taken me off at the knees. No, that. it's fair. I mean, it's right. We, we taped it. We were here at 5. We taped about 5.15, 5.20. We were done like 535, 540. We could have gone. We knew the contract was being done at that time. We had it. But I didn't tweet it out until I had it from a source that I knew I could depend on. Okay. I mean, I, I could have just. When I, you I, knew the contract was being done, which was before 5 p.m., you could have, if you wanted, have tweeted, West Virginia is currently working on final contract de details with Derek. Yeah, you could have, I mean, right? Could you could have, but, but you know uh, what? I could have, but I, I you know, I didn't, it, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a difficult relationship that you have with sources that you're trying to pin things down. And I just wanted to be, I wanted to be accurate. I didn't want to get it wrong. I wanted to protect sources and you know, that's, so I'm, 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 I'm fine with it. I'm Senator, with it. your thoughts. I'm fine with it. Go to the next text. I'm tired of this topic. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, Hey, Pete's the best. I mean, Hoppy he is. He is really, Hoppy, really listen, good. Hoppy's not going to get the next, next Drake head coach, but Pete will. <laughs> but Hoppy, for what this was, he had it. That's all. Thank you. That's all. Now, let me tell you something. You get beat on something else, I'll rip your ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, three guys, this is Devin from the Goshen Road exit. They're on I-79. In reference to Tony's Cheeto comment at the beginning of the last episode, did you know that Frito-Lay actually trademarked the orange dust that is compounded on your fingers from eating Cheeto after Cheetos. True story. They did, and they named it Cheetle. I'm going to double-check that. Now, you might be saying, how do you know? Well, I had a right to write a current events article one time in high school, and that's the first thing that popped up when I Googled current events. So that's how I've come to learn one of my favorite trivia fun facts. That is true. I just checked it. Furthermore, the reason the bags feel as though they're a 90% air is because they actually are. Higher elevation, like Colorado, for example, chip bags, Pringles cans are actually known to bust or pop due to the ch changes in pressure. So if they filled them all the way up, it would result in more lost product. As always, you guys are great. Can't wait for the next 259 episodes, which will not happen. You know, it's actually nitrogen that's in the bag. Really? Yeah. Huh. Not just plain air. Because <laughs> it protects, yeah. Uh, texter, Bart Zop from Elkins. I was listening to the last episode, flying back from Fort Myers. Heard Reese's popcorn was sent to you by a listener. I was very interested in that. Heading south from the airport, I-79, south to Elkins. Late Wednesday, I stopped 
at a convenience store that won't be named. It wasn't a Go-Mart. I was surprised to see the popcorn you guys had mentioned on the show sitting on the shelf. Mm. Ate a bag. I think it's safe to say Mountaineer Munch is clearly superior. That's what we sell. I agree. Reese's doesn't have crap on the fine people of Mountaineer Popcorn. By the way, can you... Uh can you clip this and send it to the sales folks that they might want to use on one of their sales presentations? What do you mean? I mean, did I, did I hear you right? So Bart listened to the episode. We mentioned a product. He went to the store and bought the product that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. That would seem to me a pretty yeah. good sales Listen, presentation. Listener engagement. I mean, I don't do sales anymore. I've done sales for a long time, Hoppy, but I might <laughs> take that if I was <laughs> I would, sales staff. I would just say, here, you want to, say, you want to move your product? Let Talk me about just, direct response. Hoppy, don't get any more direct response. It is a direct response. The gentleman Bart there was listening to the show, went and bought a product true I'm gonna sell a couple of these pontoon boats now. put that right at the top of the deck <laughs> deck would, there hobby uh, a deck would, advertising I would, term i would deck. say this uh, it, yeah. i would say this uh, senator to your point yeah we can't guarantee wins and losses by coaches but the one thing through 541 episodes that this program can guarantee you got a product we can move it we can sell it yeah, those great listeners, Hoppy. They'll go out and try stuff. These sure. We have wonderful people. Well, Thank typically, you, though, Thank you Bart. guys are you're, you're like influencers. So if you guys get a product and you like it, because I don't think if it was just crappy, I don't think you'd be out there going, boy, try this. No, well, never, we wouldn't, would so never we wouldn't do, do it. that. No, would never do wouldn't it. Do I it. think our listeners know. Try this hummus. Because no, 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 try yeah. Yeah. no. If yeah, it, I could, no. And I thought that Reese popcorn was pretty good, but I agree with Bart. It wasn't as good as the Mountaineer Munch. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. Ted from Colorado, as I watch the NCAA tournament, I see the deficiencies in West Virginia's basketball team. No defense, lack of strength, lack of athleticism. The new coach needs to recruit players to address these deficiencies. I suspect the new coach has a pretty good idea of the kinds of players he needs based on his experience. <laughs> Texter, listening yeah. to your Thursday cast on Friday, Brad was pontificating about BYU's chances of making a run in the tournament. Oops. I unfortunately had the same thought process and had BYU in my Elite Eight. It's funny how you feel good outside the box until picks until the game starts when you hit. What the hell was I thinking? Hope my Friday picks are better. Enjoy the rest of the tournament, fellers. Texter, Faye in Fayetteville, probably not a correct first name. I was driving in traffic listening to episode 540. The vehicle's license plate in front of me read B-W-I-T-C-H-D, bewitched, which only goes to show there is always a bewitched connection. Thank you for the years of antics and entertainment. <laughs> There's no way that can be real. You don't yeah. think? He can't be listening to an episode where we're mentioning bewitched while he's looking at a bewitched license plate, 100, can you? 100%. That would be, 50 um, years after the show aired? That'd be sure. Uh, tremendous. Somewhat serendipitous, I think. Here's a question. That needs to be asked, says a texter. Let's say you three are college basketball coaches. How in the heck do you build a program that wins consistently? The one-and-done era doesn't produce titles, and the portal doesn't produce a consistent lineup. Do you recruit fabulous freshmen or some three-star or four-star guys that you can build with? For me, I choose the latter, try to catch a five-star here and there, but maybe I'm just crazy and wanting to actually consistently win a national title and make a Final Four run once more than once in a blue moon, signed by DJ in Monroe County. Um, yeah, I, I think this weekend and the Kentucky uh, experiment yeah. of bringing in all the first-year guys, again, you want to find a model? Um, Houston. Houston recruits guys that fit their style, and they're having great success and have had great success. But they're not necessarily five-star guys four-star guys Iowa State's a really good current example right now if you want to focus on the on the center of the basketball universe right now in in Iowa I know Darren <laughs> Darren DeVries knows TJ Otzelberger well I, I think they've done a great job of, of in, you got to get that culture installed first and right because if you miss on that it's nearly impossible to get it in later years you have got to come in and set those parameters and when you do then you recruit to that system and there's different ways to do it Right, Hoppy, if you're going to end up with Tucker DeFreeze, all right, that's a very talented player that you're going to mix in that, but he fits the principles that you want to mm -hmm. bring too. So you're going to be heavy portal. That's just the way it is right now. The, the ability to go out and get talented freshmen and plug them in right away, you mentioned it with Kentucky, that, that's really hard to do. And West Virginia traditionally has not got those players. So there's other ways to go about it. There's no model that, that is right for everybody, 
but you will be heavily in the portal. There's no question about that. Paul from Tampa, I wanted to thank Brad for the following quotes. BYU could go on a run, and Auburn might be the best team in the country. Both one and done. I don't feel so bad about my dumpster fire of a bracket if spreads himself as in the same boat. Here's hoping for a WVU appearance on the dance floor next year. The very thing that makes the NCAA tournament is what also makes it impossible to pick games. So you mean it's it's unpredictable? It yes, it is unpredictable. But this is like this text is like from you. We sat there on all those games when I'd play, and you, yeah. you only you only seem to remember the ones that you miss on. You never That's would not, ever that say, is not "Hey, true. congratulations! You have a great call on that game." That, that is never, not those true. Those texts or those comments from you never come in. Was this from Hoppy? That you just no, have the text. No, you have the I give because that's how he does it no, too. No, no, the the record will show. I can't believe you said that. You missed on that one. I consistently give you credit for when you make a good call or make a great point. Rarely. Tony, that's just un, that's simply untrue. No, that's absolutely true. That's simply untrue. You miss memory. That's simply untrue. No, that's no. It's true. Like that text. No, no, I didn't know. Texter, what were the Big Twelve and the Anybody ACC? Write in, tell me when I talked about Connecticut. Anybody write that? There, Connecticut one in there. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Son, Houston was pretty good. I'm not. I've made no, no you, point. No, because you can't say anything because that's that's exactly I, what you do too. Go ahead. Yeah, please go because this is a ridiculous. What were the Big Twelve of the ACC thinking in agreeing to an unequal revenue distribution in the new CFP? Very soon, colleges will be paying players directly. The unequal revenue distribution will be no different than if half of the NFL teams had a $50 million salary while the other half had $100 million. Both leagues just guaranteed their second-tier status for as long as they remain part of the CFP. I say they quit the whole thing and start their own playoff and have their own national title at the end of the year. As for what fans of the Big 12 and the ACC should do, Boycott anything SEC or Big Ten. Don't give them or ESPN your eyeballs for any reason. J.D. from the Southern Coal Fields. I've been so uh, ensconced with this basketball stuff, and Wren has been very ensconced with the basketball stuff. I've not had a good conversation yet with someone that needs to explain to me exactly why the Big 12 was willing to take less but my guess is they're playing the long game so that they don't get left out of the party that if the SEC and the Big Ten were ever to push or move or whatever, you just don't want to get – but I don't know that for a fact. Yeah, I, don't, I'm, I need I to check get on that, that too. i got to find out. That, yeah. You might know someone. I'm just not – uh, yeah. to that point, what, what's your leverage? What, what are you going to do if you don't? participate you say see ya yeah there there won't be another national championship there won't be another and if there was no one would care about it cares yeah you just you just don't have any leverage and that sucks i mean the unequal distribution is is a problem i mean there's no question about that but I, i don't know what your options were at that point kathy from washington west virginia writing i'm watching the wv women's game and those watching were aware of espn commentators ignoring wvu Focus on the Princeton team, particularly Chin. Can we get some respect? Kathy, I would say to you, stop listening to TV announcers. They're a bad thing for society. You must listen to the radio. You must listen to the radio. Turn on to Junior. Except when it's not on the air. Except when we're on TV, then please listen to us. Hello, three guys. Jeff from Edwards. Sometimes we do. Jeff Jeff from Edwards, California, checking in. What are, what are you doing? I don't know. I just started reading this. That was Don Cricky there for a minute. It was. you. <laughs> this is serious, too, so i got to do straight. Oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. It's been a while since I've texted, Pearl Harbor Day to be exact. Over the past few months, I have faced a lot of adversity, including two deaths in the family and another close family friend. There have been high points during the period, though. One was going to the bowl game with my uncle right there and seeing the Mountaineers lay the smack down on the Tar Heels. Another happy moment was taking my family to Disneyland for the very first time. My little ones really enjoyed that. The men's basketball season wasn't the most enjoyable. However, there were high points, and I did listen to or watch parts of every game. I'm happy with the uh, job Coach Eilert and staff did as they navigated the most bizarre season I've witnessed. I wasn't able to listen to every three guys during the season, but I was able to catch the past month. It's really helped me get back to myself. The friendly banter. 
the Gomart endorsements, and Tony's hilarious unconfirmed statements really take my mind off the stressors of life, as well as keep me connected to my home state. I thank you. P.S. Is there any way you could bring back the original three guys shirt with your faces? I wasn't able to get one of those. <laughs> I'm sure we can. Probably. Yeah, we'll effort that. Talk to Dave. Yeah, got to find the design. For Where's us. Dave been? Well, he was in. Uh, I haven't seen him. He was in L.A. last week. He's back in town for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Okay. He'd like to talk to you. What now? Uh, Say what now? He'd like to see you. He misses you. Dave might be looking for a couch to sleep on. Dave, Dave has a, an unbelievable cabin in Monroe County. Yeah. And he just got that new uh, satellite thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. The internet. So he can now. From Elon ba- Musk? Yeah. He can now bang off video calls for work oh. and stay down there. Before, he used to have to drive in from Monroe County down into Lewisburg, get some of that internet. <laughs> well, now he got that internet <laughs> up at his cabin. He's all good to go. Three guys. You now, we have meetings this week here locally. Who does? We do. Three guys. The, the corporation of three guys will be meeting with clients this weekend. Oh, okay. Some new. Uh, I was not. I don't think I was made aware. Nah, we just use your name in the meetings. Hoppy's all for this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with it. All yeah. right. That's fine. I have not been led astray yet. No, we're good. Three guys. Last episode had me in stitches on my walk in Charleston. I never thought I would have bewitched on my three guys bingo card. May I suggest that if you record during next year's tournament that you all use YouTube TV to watch all four games at the same time. I did it this week, and it was wonderful to watch that from a recliner. I'm sure Brad does that. He Jennings. Yeah. Uh, I did that with this weekend. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, my, my oldest, my oldest, he got that YouTube TV, and you can that's a pretty nice feat. You watch all four of them at the same time. Pretty good. You can watch all the games at the same time, and then pick. I just do last and then flick. But, that, but how about watching all four at the same time? On the same screen. It's pretty cool. Load up multiple screens on your wall like I do. Well, not everyone's got the luxury of having 16 TVs. True. Everyone doesn't have a sports bar in their house. (laughs) Out there running around like it's Caesar's Casino. (laughs) Just taking bets. Only guy in his neighborhood that's got an OC3 for his internet connectivity. (laughs) What's an OC3? It's about this big. (laughs) Whatever you need. (laughs) Let me just this. He can watch every game he needs and send signals to Green Bank. That's uh, that's what he (laughs) (laughs) He can can listen. Somebody at Green Bank's going, I'm picking something up. Wait a minute. That's Brad Halgins on that doggone thing. In the background, I think I hear Ian Eagle. Um, Will in Charlottesville, Charlottesville, my favorite... DeVries statistic. Last 50 years of Drake Hoops, they've won 20 or more seven times. Six of those, all six, were Coach DeVries' seasons. The fact that he also seems like a true family man and community man with that level of success speaks volumes to his character and humility. Yeah, they actually won four four of those times back when Maury John, of course, was the coach. Excuse me? Maury John went to a Final Four back then. I mentioned this last night. Dolph Pulliam. Led that. Excuse me? Dolph Pulliam was a star on that team. My old high school coach, Jim O'Day, part of that final four run for the Drake Bulldogs. Jim out there in Arizona now? In Arizona. Retired to Arizona, yeah. Right. Heck of a, heck of a basketball this coach. Is, Brad, this whole coaching thing in the Iowa picking debris has been so in your wheelhouse. This was just like <laughs> hand-delivered to you. This was fun. It truly Hand-delivered. It, it truly is quite bizarre. I told him this this morning because John Beeline's from my hometown. And so to have two coaches – Right, Beeline's from my hometown, and he's got all of these connections as well. It's just kind of crazy, right, of all the places. It, it, what it does, it speaks to the small world of athletics, and I think basketball even smaller than, than some of the other sports. It, it is a tight-knit world. Everyone knows everyone. What was that town? Abington, Arlington? Applington. Applington. That was in Applington, Parkersburg, right? Applington, high Parkersburg High School. Sure. Consolidated. What, so, it's actually if no, you listen to, when you were lifting there back and as old as you are, why were they you, probably, there? you were probably lifting on a universal 
Was it a no, free weights? Oh, you had free. Weights. Oh, yeah, free weights. That's a Why nice were you room. there? They, you know, it's there's some interesting stories that that community, to be serious for a moment, has has really had some tragedy go through there. There was a massive tornado that went through that area and wiped mm-hmm. out some of the school. They had a longtime legendary football coach that Darren and his brothers played for that was that was beloved in the state that that had a tragic accident or tragic mm-hmm. event around him. He passed away. It it's a it's a it's a wild story about that community. Um, that's really interesting if you have some time to go back and Google it and research it. But they're foot, a very, very proud football program at that school. So the weight room when we lifted there was, it was a super nice weight room. Mm-hmm. Small, very tiny school, but super nice weight room. Wait, but, but again, why were you there? One of my best friends from college, um, his dad was a was a longtime teacher and coach at that high school. Okay, so you were visiting? So on the, or- on, after college one year, as, as I was heading back to Des Moines, I just went that way, followed him there. We spent a couple days in in Appleton before I headed back to I feel like with Brad and with coaches saying, I know more about it. I feel almost like an Iowan now. <laughs> like it, that I feel co- a strong connection to Iowa now. We should we should go to the state fair this year. Just kind of get, get, the, get yeah. the full get the full where's the state fair? You know what's interesting you know, I've, I've, said, man, I've said many times though, my my geography about Iowa is limited. I've I've been here longer than I lived in Iowa. So you can ask me questions about West Virginia. I'll know it better than I know the state of Iowa. This just so happens where Darren is from happens to be an area I know well and people around it well you've milked that you've milked that iowa thing pretty hard here for the last couple of days <laughs> well it's relevant hop yeah it's very it, relevant. It's relevant most of the time it's not relevant hey reminded you it, all it, it, it's, when it's never going to be as relevant when you're playing byu now. next year on a, a nine-day flight out there it won't be as relevant that iowa has a connection <laughs> gotta they'll, get it in now they'll be the byu game and go did i tell you about iowa we were, we were west virginia lines up at the huntsman center against utah for a league <laughs> game it will not be as relevant <laughs> gonna fly, we're gonna leave bridgeport we're going to have to get connected and fueled in flight. Like one of those big well, things comes in, just drops the fuel, and while we try to get it's out It's likely there. that you'll leave Italy and just fly straight to the conference game in Utah. It takes so long to get there. 20 league games next year. Hey, a reminder, get ready to fuel your fun with GoMart's updated app. Hoppy's got the app. Brad's got the app. I have the app. Your go-to for savings big at GoMart just got fresh new makeovers featuring special perks and rewards members love exclusive contest. You can get all of the new things that are going on, new clubs, members-only prices, and select products. Yeah, members-only prices, like that fly rod Slim Jim yeah. that you can take out there onto the out there onto the creek and do some fly rod fleet. you got a Slim Jim in your hand. It's 12 feet long. you got a great whip going on yeah. that thing. Update the app. For details, go to gomart.com. Okay, normally we'd come back on Thursday. However, uh, we really can't do Thursday because they're going to have the press conference on Thursday. Oh, so Friday. Friday morning? Yeah, eh, Friday at some time. We'll okay. get done. 11 a.m., I think, is the press conference Thursday. So that'll kind of take all afternoon long, or we'll figure it out. But we'll, we'll be back at some point. Probably won't be Thursday. How's the softball team doing, by the way? You're coaching this We're week? doing well. Doing well. Hey, Steal, uh, stealing any signals? No. Hey, by the Just way, trying to play straight up. we will have – the stream in one form or another on our website of the press conference. All Thursday. Right. Thursday, yeah. They're going to bump your show? Bigger name, man. Bigger name. I hate to hear that. So, we, so we're so we not quite sure when the next episode will be here. So subscribe. We'll just subscribe, as always, and follow along. And you, get a, you get a notification of some sort. Yeah. yeah. That's what we'll do. Okay. Special thanks to Austin Wright, our producer of this episode. Three Guys Before the Game, brought to us by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. By GoMart, go for good times, go for GoMart. Get that rewards card and save. By Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans, they sell family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. And by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient. <laughs> For 25 years. <laughs> Good luck to the WVU women. As I said at the start, you win this game. <laughs> national. Big national story. You're the, lead. National. You're the lead. You're the lead. You're the lead. Oh, you're the lead. Go take your run, Adam. Take a shot, take man. Take a shot. Sports is all done to lose. All right. Thanks for being with us. See you all.